What's up, guys? Welcome to the end of season series that I'm going to be doing throughout the start of the off season. We're all feeling a little sour about the season just ending, but it was a great year. It was a successful year. We did everything we needed to do and then some. So we're going to celebrate it by doing a countdown of the top 10 players on the Seahawks in 2022. I already did honorable mentions uh, yesterday. Uh, it was Daryl Taylor, Michael Dixon, Kobe Bryant, Quandre Diggs, and Abraham Lucas. So now we move on to the top 10. We're going to start at 10, going to count up all the way to number one. Each player is going to get their own video where I talk about why I put them there, why I feel like they deserve to be honored as one of the top 10 Seahawks, and also in many cases talk about what is coming in the future for those players because many of them are young, many of them are going to continue to be here for the foreseeable future. A couple are in limbo, but it's about what could be coming in the future with a lot of these players. The fact that they're already here now is awesome, but what are they going to be next year or the year after or the year after that? So we're going to start at number 10 here. Hope you guys enjoy the series. Maybe I'll do more stuff like this in the future. Let me know what you think. Our first entry into the top 10 list of best Seahawks players in 2022 is going to be a little controversial, I think. Some people are not going to agree with this one. And it's very possible that Damian Lewis actually belongs on the honorable mention list and you should bump up somebody like, say, Abe Lucas. But let's try to justify things here. Let me try to explain myself with Damian Lewis. I'm putting him at number 10 because before the year started and when the year first started, I had kind of given up on him for multiple different reasons. None of which were really because of Damian Lewis, the player. It had everything to do with the way the coaching staff was utilizing him, and then it had to do with an injury he suffered in the preseason. So to go way back to 2020, when we drafted Damian Lewis, he was a solid right guard. He had holes in his game. Of course, he was a terrible pass blocker. But that was something that was probably going to come with time. And run blocking is more important when you're at right guard anyway. And he was a great run blocker that rookie year. And then in 2021, we move him to left guard. I, at the time, shrugged it off and assumed it was going to work out. No, it didn't work out at all. I think he was a below average player at left guard in 2021. So I wanted to move him back to right guard. The team didn't. They left him at left guard. We brought in this offense with Shane Waldron that I know depends heavily on offensive linemen that can move. <laughs> Damian Lewis is a 330-pound man. He doesn't play well in space. I was just putting it all together and thinking to myself, this is going to end with Damian Lewis leaving Seattle after his rookie contract is up. We're going to look back on him as a disappointment. He's going to go somewhere else. He's going to get to play right guard, and he's going to be really good again. So... I had kind of given up on Damian Lewis ever being a plus player again for the Seahawks. And then he got hurt in the preseason. It looked like his season was over. And then he came back for week two, got hurt again, missed most of that game. And at that point, I was thinking to myself, yeah, it's really over now. Now we can't even stay healthy. Well, he stayed healthy for almost the whole rest of the year. He missed like four or five snaps against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But other than that... He was going out there every single week grinding, and he was grinding at a very high level. So here's a tweet from uh, Brian Nemhauser about some Damian Lewis stuff. This is stuff that I think most Seahawks fans are familiar with, but overall, Damian Lewis is probably the best offensive lineman on the Seahawks. Now, he's not a tackle. He is a guard. So typically you would say the tackles are more important than the guard, even though the left guard is important in pretty much any offense. But I think on top of the fact that I gave up on Lewis and then he had this season, you also have to factor in the part where what he's got working with him in that interior offensive line is pretty bad. He's got Austin Blythe next to him, and then on the other side he's got Gabe Jackson and Phil Haynes. None of those guys are really playing well this year. Damian Lewis is your only good player on the interior offensive line. So even though he's playing a less valued position, I think what he's doing is still extremely impressive because he's not surrounded by the greatest players. So Lewis actually had a better year, according to PFF, than he did at right guard in 2020. In 2020. 
and his pass block grade in particular went through the roof. We can actually go to PFF and look at this. You can see that he's actually, according to PFF, a better pass protector now than a run blocker. But he's good at both. He's a good pass protector this year, and he's a plus run blocker. It's a bizarre turnaround for him because he was always much better at run blocking than pass blocking, but it's happened. It took a little bit of time. It took maybe a little too much time for it to be worth it from a 2021 perspective, but it happened. And he ended up playing just over a thousand snaps, so he only missed basically a game and a half, same as Abe Lucas, but I have to give Damian Lewis a little more credit because I didn't expect that much from him in 2022. I really didn't. He ended up only committing four penalties on the year, which was a pretty nice improvement for him. He only gave up the three sacks, and again, pass protection was his weakness in previous years. So you put all this stuff together, and I think Damian Lewis needs to get some real credit as one of the 10 best players on this team. He's established himself now as a valuable piece of this offense going forward. And remember, he is in an offense that does not suit his skill set that well. Cross is, Lucas is, even Austin Blythe is. Damian Lewis is not a great mover. He's like 330 pounds. He's slow. He's not somebody who's going to get out to the second level or the third level and throw blocks. He's not somebody who's going to play good in space. That's what this offense needs. So that was another big reason why I really thought Damian Lewis wasn't going to be that good this year. He's playing out of position and he's playing in an offense that doesn't suit the way he plays. And there were definitely moments where you noticed that. You noticed that he would go out there, try to play in space, try to throw a block out at the edge, or try to move into the second level, and it's just not his game. And yet, he still ended up being a plus player for the Seattle Seahawks. Again, your best offensive lineman on an offensive line that ended up being, I would say, decent this year. You've got two rookies starting on that offensive line next to you, by the way. You've got two replacement level players playing next to you. You're holding it down. So I think Damian Lewis is your best offensive lineman, and the degree of difficulty for him, despite the position that he's playing, is high. So I am going to give him the nod over a guy like an Abe Lucas, over some of the other guys in honorable mentions that I know some people are going to say, hey, that guy played better than Lewis, or that guy is more valuable than Lewis. In this exact circumstance, where you have a player who, like Kobe Bryant, is playing out of position, who doesn't seem that suited for it, and then suddenly he just becomes a genuinely really good player. Remember, PFF actually had him ranked as the best left guard in the NFL in, I think it was the month of October. Um, it's shocking. It's a relief. It's one less thing you have to worry about. And keep in mind, in the modern NFL, left guards are valuable. Left guards get paid $20 million plus a year when they're elite. So the fact that we now have one more rookie contract year of a good left guard going into 2023 is huge. So as much as Damian Lewis didn't play the full year, as much as he's not a super duper star yet, I'm not going to say he's Quentin Nelson, he's really, really good. So I gave Damian Lewis the number 10 spot. I know some people in the comments are going to say he should be honorable mention. I get it. But... There's just a lot going on here with Damian Lewis, so I gave him the nod over a couple other guys that I know some people would prefer. So that is my number 10 spot. Next, we're going to move on to the 9 spot, but let me know what you think about Damian Lewis. He might be a long-term solution at guard for this team even after 2023 at this point. We'll, we'll see where the future takes us, but the future at that spot genuinely looks bright.